to the world of data science and in this video we are going to discuss about um, two more proximity measures which is Hamming distance and uh, cosine similarity. What is Hamming weight and Hamming distance? Hamming weight is the number of uh, non-zero digits in a given code word and Hamming distance is just the number of uh, different number of bits between any two given code words. Let's look at uh, a sample example. Um, if you Consider this particular class, we see uh, the Hamming weight to be the number of non-zero digits. In this example, I see there are six non-zero values and so the Hamming weight is going to be six. And uh, for Hamming distance, it's just the comparison of uh, these two pairs of data. And Whichever is having a different number of values, uh, that is what we are trying to uh, consider that to be uh, different, right? So in this example, we see uh, there are six, sorry, five pairs uh, which are completely different, whereas uh, two pairs that are identical, right? So we consider the number of different bits to be uh, the Hamming distance. In this example, I see five because the five bits are differing from C1 and the output word. And like I said, already Hamming weight is going to be just the number of non-zero values. All right. Um, let's take another example where uh, we have C2 and output word. Um, since there are three non-zero values in C2, uh, we define the Hamming weight to be three and the Hamming distance is given in red color because there are three different pairs of values between C2 and the output word. And uh, that is why we gave the Hamming distance to be 3. Um, let's look at the third example where um, there are two uh, values which is class C3 and the output word and I see there are three different values uh, that are differing from C3 and the output word um, like this, right? Whereas in the other examples they are identical and that's why we are not supposed to consider that and uh, thus the Hamming distance in this example is going to be Three and all those uh, different bits are uh, given in red color. And the fourth example, we see only one pair of data, which is uh, having a different uh, bits, whereas the other values are identical exactly um, here and here. And that's why the Hamming distance in this example is just one pair. All right. Um, you may not probably get a lot of questions in your competitive exams or um, in any of your uh, UG or PG exams, but you may probably get one or two more questions on that. But it is a kind of good to know that uh, it is used in the error corrections, especially uh, when you transmit the data between two different systems. Now, let's look at uh, cosine similarity. Um, instead of going by the bookish definition, um, I'll just give a pictorial representation of uh, what a cosine similarity is. In, in, a, in any document can be given by uh, or can be represented or interpreted as a vector in an n-dimensional space. And if there are two different documents, document A and the document B, and we identify the cosine value, which is a cosine theta value. And if they are close to each other, we represent that to be they are close to identical. And if uh, the theta value is large, then we see that they are uh, non-identical or uh, they are they are just away from uh, uh, each other and that's the interpretation here and this is a formula given and these two uh, values are just the bit uh, the value of uh, two vectors and uh, we use the euclidean norm which is nothing but the square of uh, the values um, of these two vectors let's look at the example directly um, Let's say we have been given with the two different documents and we are supposed to identify if uh, we can identify the cosine similarity and we also need to see if we can use checkout coefficient here in this example and if we can, why we can and if not, why not. Let's see how this uh, documents can be represented as uh, tables. Uh, we usually represent these kind of documents as a kind of a uh, term frequency vector where we identify the list of all uh, distinct number of uh, words in the header and then uh, map the number of frequencies of that particular word in the given data set in the given document. In this example, the word Chinese has occurred three times 
in the document A and that's why we have written as 3. And similarly, um, the Beijing word has never occurred in document B and that's why we have made uh, this column as 0 and so on and so forth. All right. Um, now, similarly, we also need to identify one more table called Jacquard table. Um, I call it as Jacquard table so that uh, we can easily identify this particular table is the one that is going to be used to identify the Jacquard coefficient. Now, uh, there is a little bit difference between this Jacquard table and the frequency table and that is uh, nothing but the Jacquard table is going to indicate the presence of a word and not the number of occurrence. Let's look at this example, right? Um, the word Japan has occurred two times in the document B and that's why we have given here as two but here in this example of Jakarta table we have made it as one because we are interested to identify whether or not a word is available and not the number of occurrences of a um, word and similarly uh, wherever we find at least one occurrence of a given word we make it as one and wherever we don't find any occurrence, we make it as zero. And that's why we construct this uh, table. And this is the table we use for uh, identifying the Jacquard uh, coefficient. Now, if you are not sure about what is Jacquard coefficient in the formula, please uh, feel free to uh, watch out my previous videos on the proximity measures. Now, let's write the formula directly and then check out uh, the value of Jacquard uh, coefficient here because uh, uh, I see there are three uh, 1 comma 1 pairs. And that's why uh, here uh, we gave it as 3. And similarly, f of 0, 1 is nothing but here this is 1. And uh, f of 1, 0 is given as 1. And similarly, 3. Now, the Jacquard coefficient value gives us uh, 0.6, which means um, as per Jacquard coefficient or Jacquard index, we see that uh, these two documents are 60% similar. Let's see how, uh, what is the exact similarity for cosine similarity. Um, to identify the cosine similarity, uh, we just need to write a table something like this where we identify A star B, Euclidean norm of A and Euclidean norm of B. Now A star B is a simple dot product or a multiplication of these two values and identify the sum. And similarly, we need to identify the um, Euclidean norm of A, which means nothing but a square of A, square of 1, square of 1, and so on and so forth. And finally, we need to identify the square root of all the values, which is going to give us 3.46. And similarly, we find Euclidean norm of B, which is nothing but 5 square plus 0 square plus 2 square plus 2 square plus 1 square is giving us uh, the total value of 34. And we need to take a root of 34, which is nothing but 5.83. And that is what is given by Euclidean norm of y. And now we substitute the simple formula here, um, x into y, which is nothing but this value. And this gives us a sigma of x into y, which is nothing but 19. And similarly, uh, Euclidean norm of uh, x into y, which is nothing but 3.46 into 5.83. And this gives us a 0.94, which means we see that these two documents are close to each other, which means it will be something like this. Uh, the theta value is very, very small, and that's why it is represented. Even if you look at these two um, documents manually, we, we see that they are almost similar, right? And that's what even the cosine similarity always says. But if you look at the Jacquard index, we saw that the Jacquard index was giving 0.6, which is not real because the Jacquard index is, the Jacquard coefficient is not considering the number of occurrences, whereas the cosine similarity is dependent on the number of occurrences of a word, whereas the Jacquard coefficient is independent of the number of occurrences. As long as a single word has occurred, we conclude that a particular word has occurred and we calculate the Jacquard coefficient. And that's why we got the value as 0.6 for Jacquard coefficient. Whereas in this example, we got the cosine similarity to be 0.94 for a given document, Chinese, Beijing, Chinese, Tokyo, Japan, Chinese, and so on and so forth. All right. Um, let's look at another example. Um, 
I really wanted to cover a kind of n-dimensional example first and then followed by a simple example because if we cover that example, we'll be in a better position to understand uh, the graphical representation of a given document. Let's see uh, a document has only two words, all right, just two words. And this represents that the word Chinese has occurred five times in the document A and uh, three times in document A, which is uh, for the Beijing word. And similarly, the Chinese word has occurred five times in document B and the Beijing word has occurred five times in document B. Now, we, we simply represent this, since there are two distinct words, we represent this as in two-dimensional space. We call it as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this 5, 3 is given by here. And similarly, this is 5, 5 is given by here. And we find the theta, which is nothing but the cosine theta, which is giving us the total value to be 0 0.97. Now this shows that these two values are as close to each other and even if you look at the reality, um, we see that Chinese, the number of Chinese words are exactly identical and the Beijing word is almost identical because there is just only two additional Beijing value in the document B whereas it is not available in A and that's why it is not giving the value to be 1 but it is close to 1, alright. And if you look at a different example where we see the document A to be 13,1, this means the interpretation of this is nothing but we see that word, some word has occurred 13 times in document A and the same word has occurred only 5 times. So you have to ensure that you map it correctly for the exact same word. In this example, Beijing has occurred one time. So that's why we gave 13 comma 1 here because it is just third, uh, represented in two-dimensional space. And similarly, 5 comma 5 is for the document B and we got the value to be 0 0.75. And this tells us that uh, the theta is a little bit large and this says that these two documents are just 75% similar. And that is the interpretation. Now, if there are only two distinct words, we represent the vector in a two-dimensional space. But in our example one, we saw that there are a lot of words, right? A lot of distinct words, which means in this example, we saw there are five distinct words. And so this has to be interpreted uh, in a five-dimensional space um, with two vectors with 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 which is given in the five dimensional space. And similarly, document B is given as five comma zero comma two comma two comma one is what is given in the five dimensional space. And finally, we got the value to be 0 0.94. And this is very efficient to represent even in a n dimensional space. And that's why we still use uh, cosine similarity to find the uh, text similarity in the text analysis or text matching pattern uh, or any of the text searching algorithms. Um, I hope uh, this is very helpful to understand or uh, graphically interpret uh, the cosine similarity. Um, thank you for watching this video. Please keep watching this space for additional data science videos. Thank you.